is Nine News Perth with Liam Bartlett and Louise Momba. Welcome to Nine News. Tonight, four dead in a fiery head-on crash in Perth South. A camera found hidden in toilets at an eastern suburb shopping centre. A new challenge for investigators on Reunion Island, trying to solve the MH370 mystery. Players and footy fans pledge their support for Adam Goods. And a downpour saves the Avon descent. Good evening. Four people have been killed in a horror head-on crash at Southern River. Police say one of the vehicles burst into flames seconds after impact. It's understood two of the victims were brothers. And we warn some of the images in this story are confronting. That's bad. Looks like someone might have been in that car. Drivers watched on in shock as tragedy unfolded in front of them. But the reality was even worse than they first realised. Four people were trapped inside the burning Holden Commodore on Southern River Road. It had collided head on with a Falcon Ute just before seven this morning. Those inside didn't stand a chance. When the Department of Fire and Emergency Services arrived here, uh, they were unable to assist the persons trapped uh, and it would appear that the occupants of the Black Commodore have been uh, incinerated in the fire. Police say the driver of the Black Commodore was travelling in a northeast direction at speed when he overtook another car and hit the Blue Falcon head on. The Black Commodore burst into flames on impact. It wasn't until the flames were out that firefighters discovered multiple fatalities. School friends of those in the Commodore say two of the victims were brothers. Online, mates paid tribute. Rest in paradise, boys, gone way too young. You were all good lads, never deserved to be taken this young. This is a very tragic outcome. Uh, there is a call for witnesses. Police want to hear from anyone who witnessed the crash or saw the Black Commodore beforehand. And Rachel Kerry joins us from Royal Perth Hospital right now. Rachel, how is the survivor? Liam, tonight the survivor is in a critical condition. He, of course, was a driver of the Blue Ute, which had no time to react to the oncoming Black Commodore. Now, I spoke to family a short time ago of the young victim. They say they're both furious and distraught at what has happened to their loved one. They say they'll remain here at Royal Perth Hospital by his bedside, hoping for his condition to improve overnight. Lou? Rachel, thank you for the update. Police have arrested a teenage driver over a high-speed chase through eight Perth suburbs. The car, believed to be stolen, reached speeds of up to 150 kilometres an hour. A woman has told Nine News it almost collided with her. A Toyota Corolla removed from a front yard in Warwick. This is where the pursuit ended, speeds reaching 150 kilometres an hour. Police say at times the vehicle went on the wrong side of the road. Kim Riley says it almost crashed into her car. I just thought I was just going to be head on. You know, I just thought I was just going to go um, through the windscreen. Police chased the car through eight suburbs. It started in Balga and went through Marangaroo, Wanneroo, Woodvale, Craigie, Padbury and Greenwood before ending in Warwick. Once it got down to that main road, yeah, it was hiking. The driver eventually crashed into Judy Harris's front yard. Clearly it's the letterbox, I think, that saved the car probably going any further down. The car hit with so much force it sent soil flying up to 15 metres away. Judy said this is where it eventually came to a stop, just inches away from where her car was parked. Before crashing, the hire car, believed to be stolen, collided with another vehicle, injuring the other driver and passenger. This police car also damaged. Officers arrested three people. The 17-year-old driver has been charged. Michael Genovese, Nine News. OK, thanks for that, Cecile. A suspected stolen car has been dumped and set alight next to Kunana Freeway. The fire triggered explosions. Witnesses told Nine News they saw a second car speed away after the fire started. A suspected stolen car goes up in flames in Jandicott. Explosions erupting from the car. Bossa! Yeah, the airbags went off and then the fuel went off and it, yeah, she was well and truly up by then. The four-wheel drive was dumped about half past two this afternoon at the end of training place, just outside a Western Power facility. Just as we were leaving the gate, um, yeah, I just looked over and we saw all this smoke and... Uh, yeah, oh, we drove down here and had a look. Firefighters quickly arriving on scene. 
stopping the flames from spreading to nearby bush. Witnesses have told Nine News moments before they came out and saw this car on fire, they saw a second vehicle speeding off down the road. Police are now looking into the incident. Yes. Hennessy, Nine News. A young driver remains in hospital tonight after a horror crash that killed four teenagers all in the same car. Rachel Carey, this man was driving the other vehicle involved. What's his condition tonight? Tim, there's been no change in his condition since the accident on Saturday. Even tonight, he remains in a critical condition here at Royal Perth Hospital with his family by his bedside. Now, as you said, he was driving the blue ute. It had no time to react to the oncoming Holden Commodore. The four occupants, teenage boys inside the Holden Commodore, all died at the scene. Now, this crash continues to shock Perth even today, especially considering this crash was entirely avoidable. The police minister shared her thoughts with us earlier today. Well, this weekend's been an absolute horror story. And there are so many families who must be wondering what the hell happened, quite frankly. Uh, my heart just goes out to all of the family members of people who've lost their lives, but also for the family and friends of that um, poor young man who's fighting for his life in Royal Perth at the moment. The families of the four teens killed continue to grieve today. The Delpup family, the family of 17-year-old Adam and 15-year-old Nicholas, are hoping that tomorrow there may be more answers as dental records are expected to return. Then hopefully they'll at least know who was driving the car at the time of the crash. But today they had the awful task of planning the funeral for the brothers. Emmy? Rachel, thank you. Firefighters... Well done. Well, every year, $2 million is spent cleaning up debris from WA roads. Everything from furniture to building equipment, mattresses, mattresses and tyres. Road safety authorities say it's dangerous for drivers and adding to congestion on our roads. A tyre in the middle of the Quinana Freeway, hit by a car at 100 k's an hour, launching it into the air. People travelling at speeds come across this, these items without much warning. They don't have much visibility ahead as cars swerve and suddenly these items are in front of them. Every month, up to 50 items of debris are picked up from our freeways. Main roads can easily fill this truck in less than two days. The debris weighs around five tonnes every month. We've seen large mattresses and things tied to roofs and, and the wind's flicking it up and the person driving the vehicle has no idea what's what's happening. Main Road says during the week the large majority of debris comes from tradies vehicles and is found on the freeway. It's a different story on the weekend. Furniture is often found on the road with people moving house, mattresses, tables and even cupboards. Just last week a load of mud and rocks which wasn't secured properly spilled onto the Quinana freeway causing traffic chaos. We're particularly asking uh, tradespeople to make sure that their, uh, their tools and their implements that they have on the backs of their utes and trucks and trailers are secure. The debris creates dangerous conditions for drivers. The number of um, ladder, aluminium ladders would be, if we'd counted those, <laughs> just enormous, the number of ladders that have come off vehicles. And wheelbarrows another one. You get a lot of wheelbarrows come off and, and they're quite... You wouldn't want to hit a wheelbarrow, you know. It's certainly, you come off second best. And the clean-up causes major delays. The resulting of all of this is the congestion on our freeways as lanes are closed and roads are closed to collect the debris. Sarah Polanski, Nine News. A shark. Nine News. A daycare centre has been evacuated after a high-speed chase ended in a fireball in the eastern suburbs. Jerry DeMassey, the, the suspected stolen car burst into flames. Yes, Emma, you can see all that's left of the Nissan Pulsar here behind me. We're standing in an alleyway right behind the Swanview Child Care Centre. As you say, the children were all evacuated this afternoon and thankfully firefighters were able to put out the blaze before it reached the building. Now, this all started as a police pursuit in Bellevue. Just before 3 o'clock this afternoon, Midlands Police spotted uh, the suspected stolen vehicle and they followed it all the way here. When they arrived, the car was up in flames and the offender had fled the vehicle. They were able to apprehend the driver. He's now in custody and Tim, while they have not laid any charges as yet, that man will continue to assist police with their inquiries. Jerry, thank you. It's an odd safety message, but one police say still isn't getting through to drivers to belt up. As authorities launched a crackdown on seatbelt use, a southern suburbs crash claimed another life on our roads just this morning. The driver wasn't buckled up. 
another life taken on our roads. A 54-year-old man killed this morning after he lost control of his car on Lesmerty Road. He wasn't wearing a seatbelt. Police say people are 10 times more likely to be killed or injured in a crash if they haven't buckled up. And then people are killed because the injuries people receive from being thrown out of a car are generally catastrophic. But no matter how many times we hear it, the message isn't getting through. It's been compulsory since 1971. 44 years later, people are still not wearing seatbelts. In the past five years, 324 people killed or seriously injured in a crash weren't wearing a seatbelt. 230 were males, 34% were children, and more than two-thirds of the crashes happened in regional areas. Police say this year alone 20 fatalities on WA roads involve people not wearing a seatbelt. Another 22 didn't buckle up, suffering life-changing injuries. Now police are cracking down on seatbelt safety. This month, officers will use unmarked vehicles and long-range cameras to target road users who aren't strapped in. And we will come down very hard on people who are not doing the right thing as far as that's concerned. Not wearing a seatbelt can cost you up to $900 and four demerit points. Sarah Polanski, Nine News. People inside was travelling on Armadale Road in Jandicott around nine last night when it crashed into a traffic light and then another vehicle. An 18-year-old woman and 20-year-old man who are passengers had to be cut from the wreckage and are critical at Royal Perth Hospital. The 19-year-old driver of the car is in a stable condition and is expected to be interviewed by major crash officers. Former Eagle star Dan Good evening. There's been another horror crash in a disastrous week on WA's roads. Two young friends are fighting for life after their speeding car was torn apart on Armadale Road. Doctors say there's little hope for one of the victims. His family has already made a heartbreaking decision. When this Ford slammed into two traffic lights, a power pole, then another car, three friends were inside. The twisted metal, all that's left, witnesses say the XR6 was speeding when it lost control. A mess. It's the only way to describe it. Just seen mangulation, car parts, lights, everywhere. The worst hurt, backseat passenger Jaden Parent is on life support. Doctors say he has little hope of recovery. His heartbroken parents have told Nine News they've had to make the difficult decision to donate his organs. Front seat passenger Kyla Eastcott had just turned 18. Tonight, she remains in an induced coma. The horror smash happened in Jandicott, 9pm at a busy intersection. The driver tried to brake. The Ford skid marks are 50 metres long. I heard the brake screech, I looked in the rear vision mirror and saw the car lose control and take out the telegraph poles and light. A total wreck. I didn't even know what make or model of the car was. Locals say this is a hot spot for Hoons, with drivers regularly speeding and running red lights. In 2012, a 33-year-old motorbike rider died when he collided with a car just 100 metres away from where last night's crash happened. It comes just four days after a crash in Southern River that killed four young men. After last night's crash, on social media, friends are paying tribute to Jaden and praying for Kyla. The driver in the other vehicle, a Western Power Ute, suffered minor injuries. Michael Genovese, Nine News. Tracy Vaux was at Royal Perth Hospital where these three young friends are tonight. Tracy, devastating news for one family. How are the other two involved in the crash doing? Yeah, well, Tim, just a terrible time for the three families. 18-year-old Kyla Eastcott had a surgery on her brain this afternoon to try and stop the swelling. The family is, of course, hoping for the best, but she remains in a critical condition. The driver, police have just confirmed, is 19-year-old Luke Offer. His injuries aren't as severe. He's stable, but still is here at Royal Perth Hospital. Police are still trying to work out how this crash happened. They're certain the car was travelling very fast and he's investigating if alcohol was a factor. Emmy? Tracy, thank you. Nine News. A 22-year-old man has apologised for a violent home invasion in Midland. Luke Reardon's accused of breaking into an elderly man's house and repeatedly punching him in the face before stealing cash. Mr Reardon told the court he was high on methamphetamine at the time. Yeah, I do, I'm sorry. I don't, didn't realise what I was doing at the time. Drugs aren't a good thing in life. They do destroy people's lives. Um, he will face court again next month. The dog squad has been expanded to help catch criminals and break up out-of-control parties. Police are hoping the new recruits will put the bite on crime.
some of their veteran canines that are still the most effective. Sarah Polanski went on the beat with the canine unit to see its work firsthand. They're intimidating. And their bark is as big as their bite. Working dogs with the law on their side. These people normally want to leave when a police dog turns up. Nine News was invited along with the police canine unit on late night patrols in Perth's southern suburbs. This is 10.30 on a weeknight. An out of control car hits a power pole in Rockingham and the driver flees. Police dog Mako is put to work, his nose the vital edge, tracking down the fugitive on a 20 metre lead. This time he didn't get his man, neighbours and police crews confusing the scent. That's what the dogs are for. If they're not going to comply with the instructions, if they've committed a serious offence, then dogs are going to be deployed to apprehend them. There are more than 30 canines in the WA dog squad. 19, like Mako, are general purpose dogs. They're often first on the scene, tracking and apprehending criminals. Patrolling specifically around uh, hot spots in the districts and uh, assisting with some local operations. You certainly can't reason with a police dog, but the handler's trained to uh, only use that dog in a circumstance where it's absolutely necessary. One trainer is senior constable Matt Maletta, and his partner is WA's biggest canine star. Police dog Rumble has caught countless crooks and saved a 96-year-old Cardinia grandmother from burglars. Even injured on the job, Rumble hasn't stopped. Wife and kids love him, and he's been probably the best partner I've had. He, uh... Yeah, he's always going to back you up 100%. Senior Constable Maletta has been with Rumble for five years. Like all handlers, he's responsible for his dog's training. When they're not on the beat, the animals do bite work, yard searches and tracking training. If we don't do training, we don't see when there is downfalls in the dog. Then if you do a training exercise where the dog doesn't find the person, we know, all right, we need to do extra work with that dog. The dogs are bred on the East Coast. Once in Perth, they undergo three months of police dog training before they're out on the road. But the learning doesn't stop there. I live with him, work with him, yeah. Yeah, so it's pretty important to have a really good bond. Tracking offenders is the most used skill in the canine unit and with little room for error, this sort of training is crucial to getting it right. <coughs> training that came in handy as a Welshpool warehouse was robbed early one Saturday morning. Nacho, come. Police dog Nacho sniffing for clues after the thieves escaped with jewellery. Nine extra police dogs joined the training program this year with $1.2 million extra funding from the state government. It's hoped they'll help stop out of control parties. The people at the party normally hear the police dogs there and, and make a decision whether to stay or leave and, and it really can affect their behaviour or affect you know, how long a party like that becomes, stays out of control. Sarah Polanski, Nine News. Stay with We're in a speeding car when it crashed into a traffic light. Alice Pooley has the latest. Well, overnight, Jaden Parent's family made the heartbreaking decision to switch his life support off. They've also made a very brave choice to donate his organs. Here at the scene in Jandicott, where this horrifying crash happened, dozens of people have already come to pay their respects to Jaden and pray for the survivors of this crash. Kyla Eastcott is still in hospital. We're told she's in a serious condition. She did have to have surgery on her brain yesterday. But the driver, 19-year-old Luke Offer, has since been been discharged just this morning. We understand he has broken bones but he's well on his way to recovery. Major Crash is still investigating this. They don't know at this stage if alcohol was a factor but they're sure that Luke's car was travelling at high speed. At six o'clock we'll have more on this and hear from some of the people who know these three friends who are obviously devastated. Jetstar and Virgin have cancelled all this is Nine News Perth with Tim McMillan and Emmy Kabansky. Welcome to Nine News. Tonight, a plea from the heart. Grieving friends unite to send a message after twin tragedies on our roads. A fire emergency at a school in the northern suburbs. WA's jobs blow. Unemployment heads to record highs. A backlash against cheaper fuel prices while the RAC is under fire for offering a discount. A Perth mum's heartbreaking warning on a killer disease on the rise here. And a docker star out of action again. 
Good evening. A group of young people is asking for your support tonight to stop inexperienced drivers getting behind the wheel of high-powered cars. They're grieving the death of mates in two horror crashes and say restricting the types of cars under 25s can drive will save lives. The laws already exist in other states, but here the Barnett government doesn't think it will help. 23-year-old Shana Cook has lost three loved ones to speeding this week. People just need to learn to slow down. So many people. It's, speeding is just taking too many lives. Two of her friends died in a horrific crash in Southern River. Then on Tuesday night, Jaden Parent was a passenger in this turbocharged car that crashed on Armidale Road. His injuries were catastrophic. Last night, his parents made the heartbreaking decision to turn off his life support. His loved ones are now convinced young people shouldn't be allowed to drive powerful cars. People think that they're invincible and think they, they can just get into a car and drive and think that nothing's going to happen. They've got to stop speeding because it's not right. People are losing their young ones, their family. Four other states have high performance bans for P-plate drivers. New South Wales, Victoria, Queensland and South Australia all restrict turbo or supercharged vehicles. The government says there's no evidence those laws would help here. The opposition disagrees. Certainly L-platers and P-platers and perhaps restrictions up to the age of 25 and if that's the evidence of where people are being killed, well then that's the area we should target. Uh, I know a lot of people won't like it, but frankly, too many young people are getting killed. Today, tributes flowed for Jaden, dozens laying flowers and praying for another passenger, 18-year-old Kyla Eastcott, still in a critical condition, undergoing a series of surgeries. Behind the wheel was 19-year-old Luke Offer. Luke Offer is the least injured of the three friends. It's understood he does have broken bones, but he's on his way to recovery. This morning he was discharged from Royal Perth Hospital. People, please slow down. You have to slow down. It's not worth it. It is not worth it. Alice Pooley, Nine News. A OK, thank you, Rachel. A very close call for two drivers in the Pilbara. Police are hoping this video will help identify the driver of a white, white Toyota Ute seen overtaking a line of traffic on the northwest coastal highway near Roeburn before narrowly missing a turning car. Police say they're investigating dangerous driving. Anyone with information should contact them. But this is Nine News Perth with Tim McMillan and Emmy Kabansky. Welcome to Nine News. Tonight, the backlash over an out-of-control party. It cost WA taxpayers $12,000, but the teenage host won't have to repay it all. A young hoon left red-faced after ripping up a child's playground. Australia's cricketer Wags copping blame. Edge and take it! For one of the worst batting collapses in test history. Plus another airline blow for WA travellers. Good evening. There's new anger tonight over a wild party that left a street trashed. The police operation to bring the party under control cost taxpayers $12,000. But a court has ruled that the teenage host doesn't have to repay the full amount. It cost taxpayers $12,000 to break up Matt Taylor's out-of-control party. It left a Woodbridge Street trashed, but the 18-year-old won't have to foot the bill for police to keep the peace. People had cars trashed, that sort of thing. I mean, this is an opportunity for you to say you're sorry to those people. Is there anything you want to say to them? Nothing at all? No. 32 riot officers and the police air wing had to be called in to break up the party attended by more than 200 people. Today, the 18-year-old was handed a $5,500 fine, less than half the cost borne by WA police. He's also been ordered to do 100 hours community service. Andrea Day's Camry was one of eight cars trashed. She says a lot of the blame falls on parents. If my son was out doing this sort of thing, I, I would be... I'd be shocked. Many of the residents we spoke to here on Chatham Road say the June incident isn't the first time something like this has happened. And some believe that the punishments need to be harsher to stop other young people from doing the same thing. It's not going to stop because they're not getting 
uh, recompensed enough. Police could have pursued Taylor for full compensation of the $12,000 call-out, but chose not to. Ben Hennessy, Nine News. A young hoon who's been caught out after tearing up a southern suburbs playground. The teenager flipped his ute and was forced to leave it upside down. Now he has to hand in his licence. The grass is ripped up and the ute flipped over. But 18-year-old driver Toby denies he was doing burnouts last night. Were you hooning? No, I wasn't. So hooning classes are over 80 kilometres an hour and I was doing 30. Success residents woken at 1am to the sound of a crash don't see it that way. And they're particularly worried the accident happened metres from a playground. Particularly at, towards the end of each day, the kids come out and there's at least two games of soccer and a couple of games of footy happening at this part of the park at the moment. At 10 o'clock this morning, Toby, who wouldn't reveal his surname, turned up to collect his car. And also apologised. Yeah, sorry for the residents and um, sorry for waking you up at 1 o'clock in the morning, so, yeah. Have you learnt your lesson? Yeah, most definitely. Cleaning up the shattered glass littering the car park, he warned parents to watch out for shards. But this afternoon, children were unaware. I'd say mum already knows through social media, so got nine or ten missed calls from her. So Think you're going to get in big trouble? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Police issued the 18-year-old an infringement for careless driving and suspended him for three months. He says he's grateful he wasn't charged. The fine was just $100. Toby has 28 days to hand in his licence. Rebecca Johns, Nine News. Nine News. An American tourist is behind bars tonight, jailed over a crash that killed his wife and a two-year-old girl. The 61-year-old was driving on our roads for the first time when he ended up on the wrong side in a fatal lapse of concentration. Jerome Rubin and his wife Joan had flown to Australia to see one of their daughters, but the trip ended in tragedy when the American drove their hire car onto the wrong side of Albany Highway and collided head-on with another vehicle. Inside, three generations of one family. Two-year-old Carmen Julius was killed, her father and grandfather seriously injured. Joan Rubin also died. There's no winners and I don't, I don't think there's any greater illustration of that adage than in this case. The court was told this was the first time the 61-year-old psychotherapist had driven on the left. The judge said he genuinely thought it was a dual carriageway. And this was simply a... Uh, a minor secondary lapse which has had such devastating consequences. The judge said victim impact statements from Carmen's family showed they had been truly devastated and there was now a massive void in their lives. Jerome Rubin's lawyer said he's now a broken man and racked with guilt knowing he caused the death of his wife and Carmen. He was jailed for 18 months. He'll have to serve at least nine. The judge said the consequences of the crash were so serious he couldn't suspend the sentence. He accepts his punishment. He's naturally upset. He's more concerned for his daughters than himself, but that's, uh, that's the sort of person that he is. Carmen Julius's family were too upset to comment on the sentence today. Cecile O'Connor, Nine News. A 19-year-old learner driver has been charged over a deadly crash in Jandicott this week. It's alleged Luke Offer was behind the wheel of his turbocharged Ford when it lost control, crashing into a power pole and then a ute. Backseat passenger Jaden Parent was killed. Another passenger, Kyla Escott, remains in an induced coma. The 19-year-old is facing a string of charges, including dangerous driving causing death. Drugs, guns, cash and a luxury yacht have all been seized in a big WA drug bust. 20 kilograms of methamphetamine worth $20 million was found in a storage unit along with almost a million dollars in firearms including a machine gun. A yacht has also been impounded. I can say that I am very happy to have this large amount of amphetamine in our possession and headed towards the incinerator rather than out there on the streets and being sold to our very vulnerable users out there in the community. Two men believed to have links to bikey clubs have been charged over the hall. We have a warning for next. 
Our police have launched a campaign to let them take guns and tasers into court. The police union wants a ban on firearms lifted because of our high terror alert level. It believes the restrictions, which include handcuffs and batons, make officers soft targets. I do not want to be there if something occurs and police officers could have had the means to prevent the carnage that may result. Well, I think it would only be in an exceptional case that you would have armed police inside a court. From Monday, police officers in New South Wales will be allowed to be armed in court. Holly. Well, thank you. A Parmelia father is defiant tonight after he bashed a home intruder. Police warned that he could be charged after putting the burglar in hospital. Even so, he says he'd do it all again. Nathaniel chased and bashed an intruder and was facing the threat of assault charges. I would do it again, like I said before, I would do it again without a heartbeat. This morning, a police phone call let him know he was off the hook. said that there will be no charges pressed against me, so that's another up and up. Yeah. So it's just been so overwhelming. I've, yeah, I just can't believe it all. The public support's been enormous. 1.3 million people watched his story on the Nine News Facebook page. I'm actually enjoying it a little bit. People driving past with the cars and that, tooting the horns, thumbs up and stuff like that. Neighbours also behind him. I think that's right. The person defend his family because it's his family is your everything's your life. What would you feel like the next day if you didn't do anything about it? The Parmelia father made a forceful citizen's arrest after he found a man stealing from his house. Lawyers say homeowners have to act reasonably when they defend their property and chasing a burglar may be a step too far. Taking pursuit might actually be the commission of an offence in of itself uh, if you catch them and they are badly hurt in the process. And my view is um, you move away from them and have those people run away. No amount of property is actually worth personal injury. The alleged intruder has been charged. The 41-year-old faced Rockingham Court today and sat before a magistrate with severe facial injuries. He did apply for bail but was refused because of his extensive criminal history. He's currently serving two suspended imprisonment sentences for robbery-related charges. He says in this case, though, he was simply walking past Nathaniel's house when he was set upon. I might even get hurt myself, but I'll do it again. Alice Pooley, Nine News. Hope is... Thank you, Tracy. We have a powerful message tonight for every Perth driver from two sisters shattered by a horror crash. Natalie and Alicia's brothers were two of four young men who died in the accident. They admit speed and poor judgment was to blame. One stupid mistake, four lives lost. Now their loved ones are speaking out for the first time with a simple message. Don't like do stupid things like don't overtake if you know that you're not going to make it sort of thing. Don't drive stupidly. Don't show off. Natalie Hoddle and Alicia Delpup lost their teenage brothers, Adam and Nicholas, 10 days ago. The boy's car was speeding, crossed onto the wrong side of the road and smashed head on into a ute. Some people don't get a second chance. Yeah, my brothers didn't get a second chance. You know, so many people out there who just ask, you know, why? Why couldn't they have just had a crash and hurt them? You know, ended up in hospital with a few broken bones and legs or something, you know, but to lose four young boys' lives. It's really horrible. Nicholas and Adam's mates say the crash has changed their approach to driving forever. A lot of us boys have like, learned our lessons from this. We've all done stupid things in our cars, but now, yeah, we've learned our lessons. And it's a main road we have to drive past every day, we have to see where our friends died. It makes me not want to drive my car anymore, to be honest. Detectives at Major Crash described this crash as one of the worst they've seen. But today, a glimmer of good news as the condition of Jason Hardman, the driver of the other car, improved slightly to critical but stable. Dougie Josick was also friends with Jaden Parent, killed just days later in a speeding car in Jandicott. So losing five people in a matter of four days is not that great. It's a big wake up call. Nicholas and Adam's friends are raising money to pay for the boys' funerals. They'll hold a car cruise at safe speeds through the southern suburbs on Saturday night. You just think, oh, you know, they, they just think about themselves and not everyone else and their families and what they've got to go through and oh, young boys. Rachel Carey, Nine News. A Monday.
Police are investigating a serious crash involving a young motorcyclist in Parmelia this afternoon. Ben Hennessy, the teenager, was rushed to hospital, but we've just got some sad news. Yeah, it's paramedics and doctors did everything they could to help the 18-year-old, but he did unfortunately die from his injuries. Now, this accident happened about 2 o'clock this afternoon here along Palmeria, Palmeria Avenue in Palmeria. Police say the unlicensed off-road bike was heading along the road when it's uh, lost control. It's ridden up a centre median strip and has crashed into what looked like a bush, uh, but inside that bush was a tree stump when he's collided with that stump. He's been thrown some 20 metres and that's when he suffered those fatal injuries. Major crash officers were on the scene for several hours this afternoon investigating and flowers have already been placed here at the scene in tribute for the 18-year-old. Major crash officers are appealing for anyone that may have information or witness this crash to come forward to police. Emmy. OK, thank you, Ben. He's <laughs> down the track. Just hope his tennis is good. Exactly. All right. Thank you, Tomo. Thanks, Thanks Tomo. Hoons around Perth are revving each other up on social media, posting videos of their reckless stunts in our suburbs. But police have warned any videos they see online could be used to bust hoon drivers. Captured on camera by a mate in another car. The pair watch and cheer as the ewe dangerously drifts around the Marmion Avenue roundabout in Butler. <laughs> the video is one of many hooning clips recently uploaded to Revhead Facebook page LS Pride. This one alone has more than 7,000 likes and in the comments section users encourage others to do the same. Like this video filmed at Wembley Golf Course, the smoke so thick from the burnouts, the car disappears. Local residents told Nine News, not only is this hoon activity happening at night time, it's also happening during the day. And with several schools located just nearby, they're worried it's only a matter of time before someone is seriously hurt. <laughs> they find it funny. Wow. That's terrible. Butler resident Crystal Collingwood lives just metres from the roundabout in this video. She says enough is enough. Think before you do, you know, before you ruin someone's life, basically. Police say so far this year, 608 vehicles have been seized under Hoon laws. And posting reckless antics like this on social media is all they need to bus drivers. Something that we've been frustrated with as a community for 10 years now as a phenomenon. If they know who it is, tell us and we'll go and knock on their door. Rebecca Johns, 9.